should you save or invest your money? Hey everyone, and welcome to The Savvy Squaddy. In this video, I wanna go over whether you should save, invest, or do both with your money. Firstly, just a reminder to everyone, I am not a professional financial advisor or an expert. Just some guy on the internet who makes videos and expresses his own opinion on shit. Don't be a sheep and do your own research. Now, most of us in some shape or form save money, whether that be in a savings account, a cash ISA, in a piggy bank, under your mattress, or even refraining from your own consumeristic tendencies. But not a lot of people invest their money. In 2020, a third of the UK population owned stocks and shares, but only 2.2 million people had a stocks and shares ISA. That is a huge proportion of the population not investing their money or benefiting from a tax-free investment account. But why is this? Why are people not investing their money? I think it's down to a number of reasons. One being that if people don't have enough money to save, then they probably don't have enough money to invest. But I think a big factor is that financial education is not on the curriculum. So people grow up not understanding it, but instead perhaps saw the effect of the 2008 financial crisis and were scared of investing as it is the riskier of the two. So unless people were taught by parents, educated by friends, their workplace offers expertise, or they take a self-interest in it, then investing knowledge and even just basic financial literacy doesn't just magically come to them once they start adulting. So instead they put their money into savings thinking it's the best place for it. Whilst there certainly is a place for saving and everyone should be doing it, in my opinion investing should not be neglected. So both saving and investing are hugely important and in my opinion people should be doing both and here's why I think that. Let's start with saving. Like I said at the start, saving is anything from sticking your money into a high interest savings account to refraining from buying some shit you don't actually need. By putting your money into a savings account or cash ISA, you can actually have it earn a little bit extra in the form of interest. Keeping it under your mattress or a piggy bank is not earning anything, and in fact you are actually losing out due to inflation. Even your money in a savings account that is earning interest is losing out to inflation because more often than not, the interest rates are not as high as the inflation rates. But it's not losing as much had it not been in a savings account. I've made a whole video on inflation which will help explain it all and I will link that below. So if that's the case, then what's the point of saving? Well, I'm sure we've all been there where something has happened and we need some cash quickly. Perhaps the washing machine broke or your car needs new brake pads. Whatever it may be, it is much better to have the cash ready for these expenses than going into debt to pay for them, as you'll just lose more money in the long run to the interest payments on those loans. Perhaps you also want to save for a deposit on a house or even a well-earned holiday. In all these cases and more, savings are necessary. The general consensus is to have an emergency fund with three to six months living expenses in just in case something should happen and this should be kept in a high interest savings account. It might lose out to inflation a little but at least if you lost your job you could survive for a number of months with no real change in lifestyle whilst you looked for a new job. A sink fund is also a good habit to have. This can be a savings account that is used for predictable large payments. Christmas, a wedding, car insurance, car service, a holiday, birthdays, etc. Things that are not emergencies but can still be large purchases. Having both a sink fund and an emergency fund will save you a great deal of stress and hassle and acts as protection against unexpected financial difficulties. I'm not going to go through a list of the top savings account as it changes frequently, so have a search for yourself and get the best deal. MoneySavingExpert.com is often a great source of information for this. I have also created a video explaining individual savings accounts, which I will link below and that will be helpful too. Saving accounts are easy to open, they are low risk and the money is easily and quickly accessible and even though inflation will erode your savings a little bit, they are still a necessity. A general rule of thumb is that if you need the money in less than 5 years, then save it. If not, then invest it. And this is because investing is a long term strategy as it is riskier than saving. But with risk comes reward. It just depends on your tolerance. Investing your money into assets is for long term financial growth and wealth. You are more akin to a gambler if you invest your money short term. The stock market is a volatile place, but over the long term, the trend is up. The amount of cash in a savings account won't ever go down. You stick £100 and a year later, that £100 will still be there with a little interest, maybe around an extra £2. But when you invest £100 into a stock a year later, it could be down to £92. But it might also be up and worth £108. And this is where the huge benefit of investing outshines savings. Over the long term, the returns from investing beat out savings and inflation, which is why it's so important to do it. 
This is why wealthy people invest. In fact, most of their wealth is tied up in investments because that is how wealth is created. You can invest in most things, but the most common are stocks, bonds, funds, commodities, and real estate. Personally, I invest in stocks and index funds. I have multiple videos already about investing, compound interest, and investment funds. I will link below a playlist with all the videos in which will help. But as a quick example, I'll take the S&P 500 index fund. This fund tracks the performance of the top 500 public companies in the US and is often used as a benchmark to gauge how the market is doing. If you just look through the narrow lens of a year, then you might be fooled into thinking that you'll just lose money when investing. Year to date, the fund is down 17%. Those who purchased the fund at the start of the year have lost 17% of what they invested. Many might be quite deflated and sell because they don't want to lose any more of their money. But it is during these periods where it is prime time to buy more as it's on offer. The fundamentals of most of the companies have not changed, but currently we are in a recession and have some of the highest inflation rates in 40 years due to the aftermath of the plague and the lockdowns. We are in a bit of an economic crisis at the moment. So the value of many stocks has gone down due to people emoting rather than thinking. But this is common during these periods. During the plague, the S&P 500 dropped over 30%. The financial crisis in 2008 saw a 57% drop and the dot-com bubble in the early 2000s saw a 49% drop. But what followed all of these drops? A rise. Over the long term, the stock market goes up. If we just look at the last five years of the S&P 500, we can see the returns are nearly 50%. And if we look over the last 40 years, the returns are well over 2000%, even with these big drops. You can see here a table of the average annualized returns of the S&P 500 over 10, 30 and 50 years. These returns are much better than those you would get in a savings account, which is why people invest. Have their money, make more money and get to the point where their money makes enough money to never have to worry about it again. This is not impossible and can easily be done. Check out my financial freedom using a military career video to see how I intend on doing it. Those were average annualized returns over a long period. So just remember that some years you could see huge gains, while others, just like this one so far, could see big drops. On screen now are the number of years the S&P 500 returned a certain amount over the last 50 years. You can see that there have been 19 years where the annual return was 20% or more, and only 3 years where the losses were more than 20%. 41 years saw positive growth, while only 9 years saw negative returns. This is why being a long-term buy and hold investor is the best and safest option. The point I am trying to illustrate is that, yes, investing is riskier than saving, but the returns are much more. You will get nowhere in life if you are afraid of risk. There are different levels of risk when it comes to investing and using index funds is one of the safest. Buy and hold is the best strategy. The younger you are, the more riskier you can be as you have longer to ride the ups and downs of the market. Sadly though, on average, investors sell their assets not even a year into their investing journey. If that is the case for this year, then most of them have seen a loss on their investment, and perhaps that experience has turned investing sour for them. I can't stress this enough. Investing is for long-term financial goals, whatever they may be. If you need the money in less than five years, then stick it in a high-interest savings account. So, when should you begin to invest? In my opinion, once you've squared away an emergency fund, paid off high-interest debt, and are still making regular deposits into your sink funds, then you can begin to invest. Sort your short term situation out first and only invest what you can afford to lose. I've made a video on how to create a budget which includes a free downloadable spreadsheet. This will help you greatly with deciding how to allocate your money when it comes to all of this. It is not a case of saving or investing, it is a case of saving and investing. Doing both will set you up for a financially secure future, investments for the long term and savings for the short term. You need to set yourself clear goals and what you want to achieve. This will help a lot with how to allocate your money. Do you want an extra retirement fund, a deposit for a house, a holiday abroad, a new car? Is your wedding coming up? Or do you want to create long-term and generational wealth? Though this list is not exhaustive, these are all potential goals that you may have and will help guide you on the best method of allocating your money to achieve these goals. Or you can just spunk all your money away on needless consumerism and cry victim when you come to leave the forces or retirement as you come to realise you are financially f***ed and instead you'll have to continue to work well into your later life just to get by whilst blaming everyone and everything around you because taking personal responsibility for your actions is a thing of the past in this nation of victims. Hopefully though, now you understand the importance of doing both saving and investing. State pension is not enough to sustain you in retirement and the armed forces pension, whilst better than most, will get you by. But if you actually want to enjoy the remaining years of your life, 
you need to actually start taking action now to build an extra retirement income source so you can have the best retirement you possibly can. This is not done by saving alone. Are you one of the 33% of the population that invests or are you thinking of starting? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. If you liked what you just saw, please hit the subscribe button up there. And if you want to see some more videos, click over there. See you soon.